have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The officers and um, senior enlisted on the Navy side are fabulous at the Naval Academy, but the Marines reminded me of cops. And, and I say this because it's, it was this, this grumbling of, oh, we work longer hours, we're underappreciated, underpaid, we have the worst gear, but at the end of every single day, there's this, like, there's this pride in being a Marine. I grew up in a family of police officers, and it's very similar, you know, and um, I, that just appealed to me, appealed to my soul. Um, and then 9-11 happened, and it really just secured that decision even further. The whole conversation changed. I, I would argue that it changed, truly changed the course of modern history. My first deployment, we were on the 13th Mew. Um, on LHD-4, and we headed towards the lovely Gulf of Aden off the um, coast of Somalia to do counter-piracy operations. It was uh, JTF Joint Task Force 151 under uh, Admiral Howard. So it was in 2011, um, I spent a lovely warm summer in uh, Helmand Province, southern Afghanistan, and our mission there was primarily close air support. So we would shoot for the Marines or sometimes for other, for other services um, on the ground, either pre-planned missions or sometimes um, we call them ticks, troop in contact. So somebody's out on a patrol, they start getting shot at, they're not able to maneuver out of that area, um, so they would call us. The teamwork and the pure focus on the mission was something I've never experienced since. When you're in that situation, honestly, it's trying to figure things out. You gotta figure out where the good guys are. You gotta figure out where the civilians are. You gotta figure out where the bad guys are. Make sure there are no civilians, you know. I remember one, um, one time we showed up and this guy, we had pit on him. Right? We had positive identification of him. And he walks into this corn, for, it was a wheat field. Like, okay, we're just gonna wait for him to come out the other side. Comes out the other side holding the kid's hand. Can't do anything at that point, right? So, so you have to, it's, it's this heightened awareness. Um, and when you, for Hellfire, it's a button. When you hit that button or you pull the trigger, um, there is an amount of like sheer and utter terror. Like, dear God, please don't let me have missed anything. You're also like very sure and you get confident the more you get there, but I don't know that it was ever 100% like, yeah, this is coming at you, buddy. You know, that was after, you know, we're all big talk after the, after the firefight. Um, but at the time, it's like, okay, I think I got this down. Please, please do not let me have missed something. I did feel the need to prove myself more than I think maybe some of my peers did. But combat's the great equalizer. You know, you can be the stud of the squadron and you get into a combat situation and if you choke, Okay, you can be somebody who maybe people aren't sure about and you step up to the plate. At the end of the day, nobody cared um, whatever their feelings were. Nobody really cared as long as I was competent. So yeah, the, I, I would say throughout my career there are certainly challenges with people's biases, but um, it never inhibited me do my job. I was surrounded by phenomenal Marines. I never had an issue leading my Marines as a woman, never had anybody question anything. Um, worked with 65 of some of the most gifted human beings and the most patriotic human beings I've ever met as far as the Marines I led. And my peers, for the most part, I didn't have any issues.